Hi, this is Nick Williford and Manos Brilakis, presenting case 299 for the Manual of CTO Interventions. This is a case illustrating the importance of the basics. Good guide engagement with good visualization and good support can be critical for the efficiency and the successful outcome of a case. The patient was an elderly gentleman who presented with exertional angina and dyspnea, was found to have three vessel disease, but unfortunately had only a single bypass lima to LAD because of porcelain aorta. He subsequently had left main standing, but uh, he continued to have angina, and he was now referred for PCI of a right coronary CTO. The patient had uh, uh, some residual disease into the left main. We see the previously placed stand. There are some uh, septal collaterals to the PDA and some epicardials going to the right posterior lateral. Again, this is the left main disease. And these are different projections showing, once again, the filling distally with the collaterals of the posterior lateral and the PDA. In the spider view, the left main looked okay with flow into the uh, circumflex as well as the rings. Because of the left main, we decided to make sure that there is no significant disease. And as we're coming back, there was some distal left main disease. Uh, but the minimum lumen area was uh, 7 mm square. So this is the standing of the left main. When we go back towards the LAD, there's some distal left main disease that's the circumflex coming out. But overall, the left main was okay. So we did not have to do anything else to the left main. And the plan was to try to recanalize the right coronary CTO. This had a blunt cup. This is a flush uh, aortosial occlusion. The length is unclear, but probably short. Distal vessels seem to be okay, and there were both septal and epicardial collaterals. Because of the ostia location of the occlusion, we decided to first try retrograde through septals, and if it didn't work, try undergrade wiring, leaving retrograde through epicardials as the last option. We went to the left main, but unfortunately, we did not have an EBU-375, which is our go-to guide. We ended up using an EBU-35, which was quite small. There were some issues here with dampening and some contrast retention, but the issue here was that visualization was poor. We were able to get into such septals. This is the first septal. We did try to do surfing with the SUO-03 as well as the CM black but we were not able to cross into the PDA. So after multiple attempts, we decided to switch to undergrade. The JR4 did not provide good support, so we switched to a 3D right guide that was a little more supportive, Turnpike LP. Gladius guide wire as well as uh, Gaia next to, but unfortunately we could not advance it much further. So we did a contrast injection, HDR or hydrodynamic recanalization, and we see a nice filling of the mid and distal right coronary artery showing a nice quality vessel. But the problem is that the wires did not want to follow that pathway, just wanted to follow an inferior course. So after multiple attempts, when it, I'm going back to the left, and this image illustrates the difficulties we had. The guide is poorly engaged. It's very hard to visualize the left system, especially in the LAD, that has competitive flow from the lima. So we tried to get into some septals, did some more surfing, just could not get through. And uh, after multiple attempts on the septals, we decided to try the epicardials, but it did not work. So we did what was the critical turning point in the case. We changed for an EBU-4 guide. And now we do have much better support. We now have a carrier microcatheter trying to go through the epicardials. And that, unfortunately, was not successful. We could not enter into these epicardials from the circumflex. We tried uh, multiple attempts, and in the end, we decided to go back to undergrade. Now we do have some better flow, although still there's competitive flow. We advanced a guide wire into what we thought was the second septal that seemed to have the continuous connection. But to confirm, we delivered the caravel and did the tip injection. And sure enough, we have a flow going towards the apex, then turning towards the base and then connecting with the PDA. We then took a filter XTR wire, which is a soft polymer jacketed taper tip wire, goes towards the apex, and then very nicely takes that band and then goes very easily into the distal right coronary artery and then is heading towards the pro proximal right. So literally this was a uh, within second crossing, 
But again, it took us several hours to get to this point. We used the Gladius Mongo guide wire that went further up, and then we were able to deliver the caravel all the way to the proximal right coronary artery. And then uh, we used a Gladius Mongo guide wire, which easily crossed what seems to be into the aorta without much resistance in the proximal right coronary artery. The issue, though, was that uh, the wire would not go up. It would just keep on going horizontally. So we took a guide from the right, trying to make some um, injections from the right, and this guide is touching the guide wire, and this confirms that we are in the right spot. We are into the aorta with our guide wire, and after we confirm that, and maybe in part because uh, um, we moved the wire with the guide, we were able to advance the retrograde wire into the aorta. The next step was straightforward. We advanced the microcatheter into the aorta, exchange for an R350 guide wire, and then we didn't have a three-loop snare, which we usually use, so we used a gooseneck. And then there is movement of the snare, movement of the wire, trying to make the two get in the same plane and capture the tip of the guide wire. And after multiple attempts, we barely caught it at the very tip, but unfortunately, the wire came off the snare. It was, however, in the guide. So after we were in that location, we were able to push the R350 and then successfully externalize. We predilated with 2.0 and 3.0 millimeter balloons, and we had some nice expansion. Uh, we did an injection, which uh, seems to be causing dissection, so we stopped injecting, and then placed two stents uh, from the mid-RCA all the way to the ostium. Afterwards, we do have good undergrade flow, but there's still a big size mismatch distally. And on intravascular ultrasound, we might have a distal left dissection. This is the stand. And then again, B size mismatch uh, going on distally. So we placed another drag eluting stand all the way to the PDA, posterior lateral bifurcation. And uh, after doing that, we did the osteal flush balloon to facilitate re engagement in the future. We removed the externalized wire, confirmed that we had no injury into the left system, and then we had a nice final result with T3 flow into the right coronary artery. The distal vessel is still diffusely diseased, but will likely grow in size now that we have restored undergrade flow. Multiple lessons from this case, but the most important is the importance of good guide engagement for visualization and support. It was only after several hours of trying, that we switched to the EBU 4.0, which provided us the visualization we needed for getting into the right septal. And after we did that, then it was fairly straightforward to visualize the connection and uh, track it down with the filter XTR. We did have easy retrograde to, to true crossing. It was probably a very short occlusion in the proximal right. And it was about persistence, trying to uh, different things over time. But again, it would have been much quicker if we had changed the guide on the left earlier on. The contrast and the radiation were quite high, but out of the four plus hours, the case lasted three, were before we switched the guide and the last hour when things really happened. Thank you.